Hey guys, Britt here. Welcome to End Times Bible Prophecy. Today we're going to talk about a number of headlines, both directly and indirectly related to Bible prophecy, so let's dive right in. This first one here is from Zero Hedge. It says, Erdogan understands Putin's decision to cut off gas to Germany and blames West's provocations. It says, by now it should be no surprise to anyone that President Erdogan tends to antagonize both sides of the Russia-West divide, all the while positioning himself as a go-between so that Turkey gets just what it wants. This was very much on display throughout past years of the war in Syria, also evident in its controversial Russian S-400 acquirement. And but the latest salvo in breaking ranks from the NATO line on the matter, Erdogan on Wednesday charged the West with provoking Russia over Ukraine. He at the same time touted that his country has maintained a balance and policy approach and perspective concerning the war and U.S.-EU punitive sanctions. And addressing a news conference during a meeting with Serbian President Erdogan went so far as to say that he understands Putin's decision to cut off Europe from Russian gas, shuttering the Nord Stream pipeline. So what's going on here? So Turkey is breaking ranks with NATO and with the European Union and the West in general, and its failure to condemn Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Why is this significant? Well, Turkey is a member of NATO, a key member of NATO, and has been for decades. And one of Putin's objectives in this war, I am almost certain of it, is to break up NATO. And Turkey is where he's probably facing that, but pushing up against that. He's, he can see that Turkey for years, since Erdogan came to power, has been trying to play both sides, as this article says, and shifting more toward Russia's sphere of influence and further away from the European continent, further away from NATO and the West. And so Putin sees this as an opportunity to create a greater divide between Turkey and the rest of NATO. And Erdogan sees this as his chance to play both sides and try to get Ma extract maximum gain for Turkey. Now, he may think he's playing both sides, but we know that in the end, Turkey will side with Russia. Ezekiel 38 and 39 tells us that in the Gog of Magog war, this alliance that includes Russia, Turkey, Iran, and a number of countries will invade Israel from the north. So this is what we would expect to see is this shift of Turkey away from Western influence and more toward the area of Russian and Iranian influence, which is exactly what we're seeing. This is just the latest instance of something that's been going on for years now, really. So on to our next story. This one is from The Mirror in the UK. It says, Edwina Curie tells, says people shouldn't get emotional over energy bill crisis. And this one, this one's outrageous if you live in the United Kingdom. It says Edwina Curry, and this, this woman is a former member of Parliament, so that's, that's the backdrop here, sparked outrage on Good Morning Britain on Monday with her comments about the rising cost of energy bills. She advised people not to get emotional about bills and the ongoing rise in prices before telling host Martin Lewis his choice of words to describe the crisis were, quote, not helpful. Edwina had said, what we have to do is not get emotional about it to the exclusion of using common sense to try to sit down and try to think about what we can all do, whether it is in businesses or homes. You see, she's holding up this piece of foil that she says, well, that can really lower your energy bill. Not everyone can accept that, but many of us can do something. We have to be cool and calm. Panic and emotion, it drains the energy when what we need to do is conserve the energy and use it well. She then proceeded to offer tips, including moving sofas away from radiators and putting foil-like material, that's what she's holding up here, behind radiators to spread warmth. Edwina said, if none of us do anything else, and expect everything to continue, 
We are not helping ourselves, and part of all this is actually helping ourselves, as well as expecting the government, local authorities, to help. She then spoke of Germany handling their own rise in bills by turning off street lamps and shops being asked to reduce lighting. What she failed to mention was that there, in addition to the street lamps turning off, well, the steel plants are turning off, and the aluminum plants are turning off, and the zinc plants are turning off, and soon the car manufacturing facilities are going to turn off, and the chemical manufacturers are going to turn off, and the lights and every business and every home in Germany are going to turn off because the economy is going to completely shut down because of the policies that were backed by politicians like her. While backing that her advice included great tips, Martin placed his head in his hand urged, and urged the former political to understand that the tips alone would not work to bring bills down. This is how out of touch these people are. She just thinks that, oh, you do these few little tips and you can lower your bill that went up tenfold. You can lower it back to where it was. I'm, this led to the pair clashing as Edwina continued to suggest his choice of words were not helpful for people in their mental health. Martin asked, Ed Edwina, isn't that a catastrophe? Isn't that a catastrophe? Let's be honest. She barked back, it doesn't help using words like that, Martin, but it is a catastrophe. He replied, you may not like the language. The language is not helpful, she said. You can't ignore the bills, Martin replied. That's what is a catastrophe. It is not my language, it's the practice of what's happening. So here we see this out of touch politician, this elitist, I'm sure she's got plenty of funds to pay for her massive electric bill, for her massive grocery store bill. People like her, the ones that put these policies in place, and now they're telling people not to get emotional about it. You know, I, I heard on the radio today that somebody called in and they said, oh, people are getting together in the UK and they're trying to get a million people to sign off on the idea that they're not going to pay their utility bill. And everybody is saying, oh, this is great. And I'm thinking, how about instead of doing that, you get a million people to sign on saying that they will never put politicians like this back in office and anybody who stood for shutting down energy for destroying coal, natural gas, oil, nuclear power, any took any power source offline in all of Europe and anywhere in the world, and they make a vow not to vote for those people again. But sadly, some of these people who are going to be out saying, we're not going to pay our energy bill or we're going to burn our energy bill in protest, they're going to go right to the ballot box and vote for these same people. This, this is what the politicians in Europe are doing, and it doesn't end here. We get this from the Daily Mail. It says, Switzerland is considering jailing anyone who heats their rooms above 19 degrees Celsius. That would be 66.2 degrees Fahrenheit for up to three years if the country is forced to ration gas due to the Ukraine war. So they're going to throw people in jail for wanting to heat their homes above 19 degrees Celsius. And then we read down here, it says, also reported radian heaters would not be allowed and saunas and swimming pools would have to stay cold. Now my question is, does it still qualify as a sauna if it's cold? I mean, how do you have a, how do you have a cold sauna? I've never heard of that before. I thought the whole point of a sauna is that it's hot. <laughs> And yet, but I guess if you get your son a hot, they'll put you in jail for three years. That's what they're saying. This is outrageous. And anybody in Europe that doesn't stand up to this, that doesn't show up and exercise their right to protest and to vote these people out of office, deserves everything they have coming. Because all of this is the result of politicians and their insane policies. And it's... <laughs> Look at what it's brought Europe to. It is an absolute crisis. On to our next article. This, is, this one says, In India and China, farmers fret as drought and heat threaten rice harvest. In June, when Mahindra, Mahindra 
Prey Tap began planting his rice paddy fields, he was hoping for a good harvest. The year before, torrential rain had destroyed his crops and he did not receive any help from the government. But during the recent monsoon season, he encountered just the opposite problem. Too little rain. By August, 90% of his crop had wilted. This year, the land is barren, and again, we did not get help from the government, he said in a phone interview, adding other farmers have been hit by the same problem. Extreme weather across the world's major rice-producing countries, including India, China, and Pakistan, is threatening global output of the grain this year, possibly affecting more than 2 billion people in Asia that depend on it as a staple food. Even against a backdrop of soaring food prices this year, Rice has remained largely affordable due to four years of plentiful harvest previously, but a confluence of factors including the high cost of fertilizers following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, a record heat wave and a drought in China, low rainfall in India, and massive monsoon floods in Pakistan are threatening yields and driving up prices. And again, we've been over this. The real threat here with rice, especially when we're talking about India, is that India would institute a ban on exports. India makes up 37% of the world's rice exports. If they put a ban on, especially when you have countries like China, which produce rice internally, but they have 1.4 billion people they need to feed, and if they're having an issue, they may look to enter the, that export market and buy some rice for themselves, import some rice for themselves. They have the resources to do that that some of the smaller countries don't have. So this is going to lead to even more higher food prices than what we've experienced in the recent past. We go on, we see this energy and food crisis converging in the UK. It says food bank users asking for non-cook food because of energy cost fears says food bank users are now requesting non-cook food after surging energy prices mean they can't afford to put the oven on. The cost of living crisis has seen a rise in food bank users as shop prices rose by a record 5.1% in August, according to the latest report by the British Retail Consortium. This, combined with a huge surge in energy bills, has led to an unsustainable situation Ian Olton, a trustee of West Cheshire Food Bank, said. Here they had this tweet. It says, rising food costs mean more people are turning to our food bank to survive. Please, if you are able, and we know it's getting harder, donate to give people facing hardship the essentials they need. Thank you for every can. We read on, it says, Mr. Olton claimed the charity is seeing a 70% increase in use compared to pre-pandemic levels. He told the PA news agency for the first time we're spending thousands of pounds on food to top up our supply, around 20%. This is an unsustainable situation for an independent charity. The majority of people coming here are working people. People with full-time jobs are now requesting non-cooked food because people can't afford to put the oven on. More and more people are turning down fresh vegetables because they can't afford to cook it. This is a disaster. What happens when it gets colder? Guys, think about that. So people with full-time jobs, full-time jobs that used to be able to afford to pay for their daily existence, now they can't even afford to turn the oven on. They, get, they go out and they get handed food. They're given the food that they otherwise couldn't afford, but they can't afford to cook it because the energy prices are so high. This is a calamity. This is an epic catastrophe. And it's not going to get any better for the reasons we talked about because these politicians, they're going to come to the rescue with by printing currency and trying to paper over the problem they're not going to do anything to increase the supply of energy, which is the problem. They're going to try to bail out industries, bail out individuals by printing currency, which is just going to lead to higher prices and or shortages 
It's just going to make the situation worse. If people can't afford to cook their food, think about, think about the grocery stores. Can the grocery stores afford to run the refrigerators and the freezers for the food they have? What does this mean for food security in Europe and around the world? And of course, that leads us to this story from The Sun. It says, Tesco to beep, beef up security and slap tags on food to stop surge of desperate shoplifters sparked by cri cost of living crisis. It says supermarkets are beefing up their security and slapping extra tags on everyday food as they see a huge rise in shoplifting. Tesco chairman John Allen revealed how desperate people are seeking desperate measures as costs soar. He told Times Radio some people had literally got no money left and were being forced to take drastic action to survive. The former president of the CBI said shoplifting is a concern and, you know, getting the police to take action and respond to cases where we and other retailers, you know, this is a concern right across the retail trade. I don't sympathize with people who shoplift, but I can understand desperate people taking desperate measures, sometimes when you know they've literally got no money left. More security tags are being slapped on items and extra guards put on the door to try to stop them. But he added, there's a limit to the amount you can do. So guys, people are to the point where they have to steal food to survive. They can't afford the food. The food banks are running out of food. So people who otherwise wouldn't shoplift are starting to shoplift. They're starting to steal food. And of course, the response from the grocery stores is to put guards at the door. And we've talked about this in the past, in the recent past, that this is where all of this would lead as the food shortages intensify as we go into the end of the year and into 2023, as food inflation becomes more and more of a problem, theft is going to rise and they're going to put security guards at the doors of the grocery stores. And eventually it will lead to some sort of ration card where you have to show an ID. You have to check in to go into that grocery store. That's where all of this is headed. And we go to this. I guess this cartoon was intended to be funny, but it's not It's not so funny anymore. <laughs> it shows these cows and a pen. And you got this cow over here. He's pointing at the meat packer plant and he's holding up a blueprint. This is what they're going to do to us. And this cow here, he says, I see Mr. Conspiracy Theory is at it again, right? <laughs> and here the Wall Street Silver says, how it feels trying to warn people about what's coming, right? All we have to do is scroll down a little bit, first comment, I don't know what's coming. You have to be more specific. Well, that pretty much, in a nutshell, <laughs> <laughs> takes care of what he's trying to say by how it feels to warn people about what's coming. So many people remain unaware of what's coming, even though we've been warning for months and months. All year we've been talking about fertilizer shortages, the coming food crisis, all of the negative impacts on our food supply, and how that would lead to High food inflation, shortages in certain places, famine in certain places by the end of this year and well into 2023, we said, make sure, take care of yourself, your family, the people around you, collect cans of food because your food bank is going to need those. And now we're seeing that. We said they're going to put armed security guards at the grocery store. And now we're reading about that. We're reading about how they want to put people in jail who turn their heat up above 19 degrees Celsius, 66 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, that's it's rather cool, guys. <laughs> that's it's not, not a very warm climate to have in your house. And yet the, the political reaction, the reaction from the politicians is, why are you getting all emotional? We're going to go into a rough 
end. There's going to be a lot of suffering and misery in Europe as we go into the end of this year. And if you don't live in Europe, if you don't live in one of the places where these problems are to the degree that they are right now, guys, this, this is a global problem. This is a global problem. The energy market, the food market, those are global markets. That impact's coming. It's going to be more severe in certain places than in others. But you need to be prepared for it. You need to figure out how to take care of yourself and your family and the people around you. And while this may seem dire, we've, we've also discussed in the past that, guys, this is a great opportunity. It is an opportunity to serve the Lord by being someone who can feed somebody who's hungry, who can comfort someone who needs comfort, because there are going to be a lot of people who need comfort in these times. It's going to be a time when you can give clothing to somebody who needs clothing. It's going to be a time when you can be the rock and the support that other people need where you can show the light of Jesus to a world that lives in darkness. So while we're going into this dark winter and things don't look good, Jesus lives, guys. He is the light of the world. And so he shines a big spotlight on that darkness. And we need to, this is a time of, of contrast where people can see the light and the times of darkness. So you need to be that light for people. We need to be spreading the gospel now more than ever. There are going to be people who are far more receptive now than they ever were before. Because when people are desperate, when people are suffering, that's when they reach out to God. And we need to be ones that point them in the right direction and say, Jesus is the Messiah. The Bible is the word of God. Let me tell you more. Let me help you. Let me show you kindness in a world where politicians tell you to stop getting emotional. Let me show you warmth in a place where your government will put you in jail for trying to be warm. Guys, this is a great opportunity. Don't waste it. God put us here on this earth for this time, for this time specifically, to be his hands and feet and to show others the light of Christ. So make sure you do that. Guys, like this, share this, God willing. We'll talk again on Monday. Bye. If you want to learn more about the end times and Bible prophecy, make sure to sign up for my free monthly newsletter and get your copy of my free ebook, Seven Signs of the End Times. Just follow the link in the description to get your free book. Also, Make sure to check out all of my books. Just look up Brit Gillette on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple iBooks, Google Books, Kobo, or anywhere books are sold. Thanks for watching today, and until next time, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith.